Okay, welcome to lecture 34. In this lecture, we're going to talk about ranking cycle improvements. The picture we're starting with here is of a, it's actually a video that focuses on a coal-fired power plant. And I thought it was an interesting video. You might want to take a look at it, so just, just click on the YouTube link here. It starts with a discussion of where coal comes from, you know, that you can ignore. But then it goes into the discussion of the boiler, various turbines that are used, you know, the power generation process. It talks about the condenser and then how they handle exhaust gases and such from the power plant. So it's kind of an interesting video. It's about seven minutes plus, so you might want to take a look at it. I thought it was kind of interesting, especially because it shows some of the parts that we talk about in our ranking cycle. And specifically in this video, they talk about a ranking cycle with reheat which is one of the topics we're going to talk about today. So, so check out the video when you have a chance. All right, so we're going to talk about improvements to the ranking cycle. And just as a reminder, look at the picture on the top here, just the standard ranking cycle. If you recall, what we have here is a state one to state two. This is where we're going through a turbine. Let me put a little picture here to, to correspond to our different parts. So we have a boiler. That then leads into a turbine. So this is our turbine. This is where we're extracting our power. This is our state one. We come out of the turbine and we go into a condenser. So that's where we offload some heat into the environment. The turbine is where we're extracting some power out. So state two is before we go into the condenser. And then from the condenser, we go into a pump. This is our state three pump. Of course, we put some power in. It's a small amount of power in compared to what we get out of the turbine. And then we have our state four, which goes into the boiler. And the boiler, of course, is where we put our heat coming in from our hot reservoir. And in the coal-fired plant video, it's coming from burning of coal, of course. So our state one leads into the turbine. That's right here in our ideal ranking cycle. That's at a saturated vapor state at some high pressure. We pass through the turbine to state two. The pressure decreases. This, this isobar is a lower pressure than that isobar. And our temperature has dropped. You can see T1 is up here, T2 is down here. So this is our actual operating point two. The vertical line here is for the isentropic case through the turbine. But this is our actual case. And then we go through the condenser. It's an isobaric process, so it's constant pressure. So we follow that isobar to a saturated liquid state, to state three over here outside the condenser. And then from three to four, we're in a condensed liquid state. So from three to four, we follow this dash line here. That's where we're going through the pump. And then, of course, the vertical line there is the isentropic case. Typically, well, always, your turbine and pump have some isentropic efficiency that's less than 100%. And then from four to one, where we go through the boiler, this is a constant pressure. We're following this isobar from four to one. That's a constant pressure heat addition process. So we're going from there to there. So that's just a refresher of our ranking cycle. Now we know that the efficiency, the ideal efficiency for a reversible power plant is related to the absolute temperatures of the hot and cold reservoirs, right? So this is, this, this thermal efficiency is only for an internally reversible cycle, okay? It's only for internally reversible. It serves as a nice guide for us to better understand what we can do to improve the efficiency of a real power cycle. Typically, you don't have a lot of control over the cold reservoir. That, that would be the temperature out here that we're ejecting our heat into. We don't have a lot of control over that. That's just whatever the environmental conditions are. But we do have more control over the hot reservoir. And the hotter we make our hot reservoir, you know, the, the fuel that we're burning here, the hotter we can make that, our efficiency will go up, right? If this number gets bigger, then this whole expression TC over TH gets smaller. And so we get closer and closer to an efficiency of one. And for a typical ranking cycle, the efficiency would be something on the order of about 33% or something like that. So if we can get our hot reservoir temperature higher, the more efficient our process will typically be. Now in a ranking cycle, where we're adding the heat is right along this path right here from four to one, right? So the temperature at which we're adding the heat, it's not quite, it's not quite this temperature, T1. It's, remember T4 is down here. So it's somewhere between 
T1 and T4 because we're, we're adding heat in this part and that temperature is below T1. And then here we're adding heat at T1. So the average is somewhere in this range, right, between T1 and T4. If we can increase that average temperature, we would typically get higher efficiencies. So the way we do that is we move to what's known as a Rankine cycle with superheat. The picture is shown down here. In the Rankine cycle with superheat, the only real difference is this point one is now moved into the superheated vapor region, right? The original point one was just a saturated vapor, but now we're in a superheated vapor region. And if you look at that, our average temperature now has gone up a little bit, right? Because this is T4S. Our original average temperature was somewhere right in here, right? Because we were saturated vapor in the pure Rankine cycle. But now with superheat, what we've done is we've, in that heat addition process, as we go from four to one, we just keep adding a little more heat and move into the superheated vapor region and see, and you can see that the temperature goes up. So that means our our average temperature at which we add heat is a little bit higher, so we can expect a higher efficiency in this ranking cycle with superheat. The rest of the cycle looks the same. By the way, I've only drawn, drawn these as in the ideal or isentropic turbine and pump situation, so I, I just have a vertical. The, the actual would look something like this, right? So this would be our point 0.2 and this would be our point 0.4. So you can see the cold portion of the cycle where the condenser is down here, that hasn't really changed. That's still going to be whatever the environmental temperature is you know, or close to it. But we did increase the average temperature where we're adding heat. So this will typically give us a little bit higher efficiency. Right? And we're still moving along the same isobar as we do that heat addition process. So we're now in a superheated vapor. The other nice thing about this is it's a little easier on the turbine you don't have as many um, droplets of water. When you're, when you're under the vapor dome, you get those water droplets that impact the turbine blades at high speed, and that can cause some mechanical stresses on the blades, and that's generally not good for them. When you're in a superheated vapor region, you don't have that as much. You still have state two is a saturated liquid vapor mixture, but it just tends to have a higher quality, so you have fewer droplets. So it's a little better on your turbine in that respect. It's a little harder in the sense that the temperatures are higher, so you just have to make sure that the materials that you're using in your turbine blades can withstand those higher temperatures. The pressures don't change. You still are dealing with the same pressures. It's just the temperatures are higher. So with these kinds of uh, ranking cycles with superheat, you can get improved efficiencies over 33%, you know, between 33, 40, maybe a little bit higher than 40%. And then there's a ranking cycle with reheat. Okay, so this is the next variation. So the picture here is you have staged turbines. So you actually go through one turbine, then back to the boiler, and then through another turbine. If you looked at the video, they talked about this. They actually had three sets of turbines there. This picture only has two. So what we have in this particular case, we're still starting off in the superheated vapor region, state one. State one is right over here, going into our first stage turbine. This is a first stage turbine. We pass through the turbine to state two. So state two is right down here, right coming out of the turbine, first stage turbine. So you can see we're in the superheated vapor region. We go through that first stage turbine. We're at a high temperature here, right, and high pressure. And then what we do is we now go through the boiler. We came out of the boiler, went to the high first stage turbine. We come out of the first stage turbine, and then we're going to add some additional energy to our working fluid by passing it back through the boiler. So this is called a reheat stage. So we actually put a little more energy into our, our working fluid, bring it back out, and then we go through a second stage turbine. So we come out of here and we go into our second stage turbine. And now that I look at the, the corresponding numbers here, they don't line up with the, the picture. So let me renumber these. So this is one, two's there. This is our three coming out of the boiler. Then we go through our second stage turbine. That comes out at state four. So state four is coming out of our second stage turbine. And that's right here. And again, I'm, I'm showing the ideal or isentropic case for the turbines here. So these have 100% isentropic efficiency. Real efficiencies, you would move a little bit to the right on those isobars there. So then we go through three and four here. You can see the, the pressure, the highest pressure is going into the first stage turbine. 
you drop the, to a different isobar through the second stage turbine, so it's a moderate or low pressure case. And then we finally make it to whatever the pressure is for the condenser. From four to five, we're moving through the condenser, so I should change that number to five over here. That's where we reject heat to the environment. From five to six, we're going through a pump. So here's our pump here. So five to six there, and of course, with a less than 100% isotropic efficiency, state six would be right there. And then from six back to one, that's when we're going through our, our boiler. So here it's called a nuclear heat source for like a nuclear power plant, but it could be anything, right? So this is our heat addition. So our heat addition follows this path, and then there's a secondary heat addition there as we go through the reheat stage. So this is called a Rankine cycle with reheat. And again, the idea here is we're getting our average temperature at which we're adding heat even higher because we, we've already done the reheat portion to boost it a little higher, and then we're adding a secondary heating that brings it up higher still. Okay, so, so the larger we get a larger average temperature at which heat is added, and then that gives us additional efficiency out of this. And you could go through this process multiple times. It doesn't just have to be two stages. I think in the video you saw there, there, were, there was three, a three-stage turbine process. You can stage this multiple times. So that's a ranking cycle with reheat. This is a very common type of power plant design. Very, very common to have multiple stages with reheat. Let's go on to the next one. And this one is the most efficient one that people have designed today. This is called a ranking cycle with supercritical reheat. So in this one, what happens is it's all the same processes as before, except when we add heat, the heat addition portion is this line. This is our, our initial pass through the boiler. We are above the vapor dome. Remember, this is our critical point here, critical point CP. So what happens is we go super critical, actually, with our working fluid. So we get to much higher temperatures here, but we're also at much higher pressures. So you can see that the pressure from six to one, so this is where our pump is, is from five to six, and this is our boiler from six to one. Our isobar up here, I didn't draw it, but I, I should. This isobar, P6 equals P1, is greater than the one from P2, and it's greater, of course, than P4. This isobar is a very high pressure. So we get a much higher temperature at which we're adding heat, and that helps us as far as efficiency goes. But the problem is, is we get to much higher temperatures and much higher pressures, and that causes more engineering challenges for building piping and things like that. You have to just make sure your materials can withstand the pressures and withstand the, the temperatures. Now this particular cycle that I've shown here is a supercritical. Supercritical just refers to the fact that we're above the critical point for part of it. But a supercritical reheat, and the reheat just has to do with the fact that we're going through a first stage turbine from 1 to 2S, and of course the real case 0.2 would be something like right there. And then we have additional heat addition from 2 to 3. That's the reheat portion. So this is our, our pass through the boiler again. So this is a, the reheat portion where we go through the boiler one more time. And then 3 to 4S, this is our second stage turbine, or 4 as I'm drawing it there. So this is our second turbine. And then from 4 to 5, again, is our condenser and five to six is our pump. And of course the, the real pump, it would be 0.6 there. So that's a ranking cycle with supercritical reheat. And here again, you could have multiple turbines, not just two here, but you, maybe you have three, for example. The purpose of this is to get, again, a higher average temperature to improve the efficiency. And I mentioned down here in note four that efficiencies up to 47% can be achieved here. So these are very high efficiency power plants. Remember that the ordinary ranking cycle was down in the 30, low 30 percentile range, so much higher efficiencies. But it comes at a cost, and that cost is that my note three here, that you have to deal with high pressure and, and uh, high temperatures for your materials that you're working with. These are the most advanced power plants that are out there right now. But you can see that the efficiencies have improved quite a bit. So I think with that, we'll end it there. The analysis of these kinds of systems is basically the same as what we've done previously. Let me go back up to a picture here. 
So if I, if I show the picture here of all the various components, we analyze that system exactly in the same way that we've analyzed our other cycles. For example, if I wanted to analyze the second stage turbine, you know, I'd draw a control volume around it. I could apply the first law to it. I could apply the entropy equation. I could do that for all the various components. And then if I wanted to do an overall analysis of the whole system, I could do control volume around the whole thing and analyze it in this approach, right, where we had a hot reservoir, heat coming in, our system, and then heat going out to our cold reservoir, right, and some power out. So we can analyze this system the same exact way we've done it previously. The thing that gets more complex about it is we just have more components. You know, it's just it's more tedious because you have more things you have to analyze. So more bookkeeping involved. When you start getting into the supercritical analysis, this one again, it's just the same type of first law analysis. The only thing that's different here is now some of the properties are actually above the critical point. You handle it in the same way. You still look the properties up in property tables. It's just they're now above the critical point. You handle it much the same way. When fluids get above the critical point, then what ends up happening is they behave like a, a more viscous vapor. They don't behave like a compressed liquid. They behave more like a, a vapor, but one that has higher viscosity. They don't have a mixture of liquid and vapor. It's just vapor, but a viscous vapor. All right, so we'll end it there.